Blaz was crack and welcome back to another new video in KTFG and well the season is pretty much over there's only a couple more finals to go and the 2022-23 season is over that only means one thing of course the transfer news is back for another summer of drama of, of transfers and well I'll tell you about here we're going to begin off things today we're going to catch and going to help you catch up with some of the latest big transfers that, that have happened in the world of football trust me there is a few massive ones in here and well that's pretty much what it's going to be here today and maybe transfers that are close to happening as well so before we do waste any more time in this intro make sure you are subscribed to the channel 95% of you who watch my videos are still not subscribed so if you are a new viewer make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video as well it really does help and support the channel and make sure you click the bell if you're notified when they upload a new video so enjoy it is transfer news of uh, the 5th of june 2023 i guess we'll start off then with the big transfer that's been in everyone's uh, minds uh, over the past day or two it is karim benzema finally after many brilliant years at real madrid he has left and it's a here we go from the man himself for Brizio romano benzema will be heading on a free to the saudi league joining al etihad now benzema of course he's done all he can in europe he's won Plenty of La Liga titles, he's won the Copa del Rey, he's won loads of Champions Leagues, he's he won the Ballon d'Or as well, it's worth mentioning as well, like, he's pretty much completed European football at this point, and well, I think, you know, maybe he just wants to kick the feet up, maybe get a good bit of money to help him set up uh, for when he does retire in a few years, and well, of course, you know, he definitely can't stop pod in the Saudi League, of course, uh, Ronaldo's sort of been, uh, getting a good few goals there, so I'm sure Benzema can definitely be scoring more goals than Ronaldo, because I do believe Benzema still is sort of in his prime, whereas Ronaldo definitely he is past his prime. Look at all they had of Daphne got themselves an excellent sale. It has came at the price though on their wage bill. 200 million a year Benzema is going to be earning. That's something similar to what Al Nasser gave Ronaldo. I mean that's just crazy. It's crazy money and well I worry that the Saudi League with them crazy uh, fees of wages and all they're just going to ruin football. All the big stars I can see maybe going to the Saudi League over the next few years. I'm just hoping they'll bring them in with Cousins of Halliwa. It looks like they are ruining football, taking all the big stars, bringing them over to the crappy Saudi League. I mean, I have to say it really. It is a bit of a farmer's league over there. But anyway, Benzema, look at I'm sure he'll be excellent at all that he had there. The Saudi League champions as well. I think it's worth mentioning. So he is joining the good side there over in Saudi Arabia. And well, let's see how he gets on. I'm saying he scores 30 plus goals next season. And I'm going to say he will help Ali, Ali, Al Etihad to win their second Saudi League title in a row. So Benzema joins Al Etihad on a free, but 200 million a year on a two year contract. I tell you what, it is a good business there by Al Etihad. Their wage bill will be hit by a lot, but I'm sure they're going to afford it. Here an excellent sign and Benzema off for the Saudi League. Now this one hasn't been a hundred percent here we go yet it's not a hundred percent yet but it pretty much is done it's another big transfer it could be the biggest transfer of the window it is jude bellingham it looks like he is going to be joining real madrid for a fee of a hundred million plus add-on euros now i tell you about here bellingham of course i thought i thought all these months like he go to liverpool or he go to man city or united or chelsea i thought he was destined for the premier league but apparently not, apparently none of them teams can afford him, well I'm sure City can afford him obviously, maybe even Newcastle as well, but no English side is really in for him, and Real Madrid are pretty much the only side in for him, and I tell you what, this is going to be an excellent steal here, I mean it's not really going to be a steal, it's coming at a big price of 100 million euros, but still Ballingham will be some player I do believe for Real Madrid, now the question is, do Madrid even need Ballingham, because you look at their midfielders, sure Modric is getting on in the age, but he still has it in his locker. Like, Cruz is getting on in the age chair as well. But, you know, you've got young midfielders coming through, like Fetty Valverde, Kama Ving is also coming through. There's someone else in there as well. I forget his name. But there is someone else in there as well. I mean, but do they really need Ballingham? I guess maybe if they're planning on maybe making their midfield better over the next few years, maybe it is a decent signing. But I do believe that we just have too many midfielders. And maybe the play didn't even need Ballingham. But, you know, it definitely will improve their midfield. And I think Madrid definitely do have a good chance of winning a lot next year, especially in the Champions League as well. And I think with Ballingham in that midfield as well, alongside Modric maybe, alongside maybe Fede Valverde, Camavinga, you know, it's, it's going to be an excellent year for Real Madrid, despite Benzema leaving. And well, Ballingham is 100%, I do believe. 
going to be joining Madrid. It's going to happen in the next couple of days. And well, he is definitely going to be some signing. So, belly him to Madrid. 100 million euros plus add ons. Maybe a signing Madrid don't need, but overall, it still will be an excellent signing for Ancelotti's side. And I'm sure he'll help their side a lot next season. Now we go on to Liverpool and well, although they couldn't sign Jude Bellingham, they have signed a new midfielder. Um, for which you put it out a few hours ago, here we go. Alexi McAllister joins from Brighton after Liverpool triggered his race clause of around 60 million quid now. I think this is an excellent signing by Liverpool. You know, McAllister is a quality footballer. You know, we, we've seen him in the World Cup for Argentina. He was quality there, one of the players of the tournament they go as far as saying and then he's helped Brighton get a sixth place he's helped Brighton get Europa League football and well he's leaving a hero he's definitely been the sea one of the Seagulls best players arguably of all time seeing how he's done over the past few years maybe that's a bit of a push but at least over the past few years he has definitely helped them a lot and well he's leaving a hero there definitely I think Liverpool definitely did need a new midfielder because their midfield was really poor last year really had no one in there but McAllister he's going to add new flair new creativity to that midfield he's really going to help it a lot and well Liverpool will definitely be have a lot better season with McAllister midfield and with Klopp's midfield will now be improved and well surely Liverpool do get top four next year with their midfield improved and have quite possibly could be improved even further if they do sign another midfielder or two but here anyway McAllister is an excellent signing and I'm sure he's going to do wonders for Liverpool and help them out a lot next season. So McAllister joins Liverpool for 16 million quid and around that. It's an excellent signing by Klopp. I think they've got a decent fee for him. And well, let's see how McAllister does get on. I'm pretty sure he's going to be an excellent player for Liverpool next season. Now we go on to PSG. We have completed the double signing. The first one is they've signed Manuel Ugarte from Sporting Lisbon. The midfielder joins for about 60 million euros. And Marco Asensio also joins from Real Madrid on a free. Now, Ugarte, maybe 60 million is a bit too much. I, don't, I haven't really seen him play. Like, but I have heard decent things from him. But maybe 60 million is a wee bit too much. Then again, this is PSG who we're talking about. So they can pretty much spunk any amount of money on anyone. Like, so, I mean, Ugarte definitely can't see him de doing all right at PSG. I think he'll become a more well-known footballer there, but I'm not too sure how he'll do in his first year. Will he even get much game time? And that's the thing, because PSG, they have a lot of midfielders there. You know, with the signed Vitinha there last year, he came from Porto. I'm not too sure how he's done. I'm not too sure if he's got much game time. But I'm pretty sure Garte will do all right, I do guess, in the game time he does get. Maybe PSG will have a certain role for him, which he does fit in to the starting side. I definitely can't see him maybe start and maybe develop. He does look like a promising enough midfielder, but 60 million just seems a bit too much for me. Maybe 40 million tops. Haven't really watched the guy, as I've said. Maybe he is a lot better than how I think he is, but you know, you got to the PSG anyway, 60 million, a wee bit overpriced in my opinion, but overall, it could still prove to be a decent signing, I do believe. And then Marco Asensio, this is pretty much the Messi replacement, and of course, it isn't much of a replacement in Messi. I mean, that's going to be hard to be a replacement for Messi anyway. It's going to be hard to find a perfect replacement for him. But I think Asensio will do good at PSG. I think uh, he is a quality player as long as he stays out of injury, which I do believe he's been out of uh, out of Real Madrid a long time this season due to injury. I'm pretty sure, you know, if he does remain injury-free for a lot of next season, he will prove to be a quality player for PSG. He definitely can't help their attack a lot. Obviously, probably won't be as good as Messi has been for them, but, you know, I think he still will be a decent addition here. He'll still help them out a lot when he isn't injured. And, well, let's see how Asensio does get on then in Paris. I do believe he definitely can have, uh, play a big role for ne next season in that PSG attack. So, Ugarte joins for 60 million alongside Asensio joining on a free. A double signing here for PSG. And it definitely are two good signings, in my opinion. And two players who definitely will help their side out for next season. Now, the final one here, it's a rumour. I mean, it could be, I could see this being a rumour in the next two months. But will it happen? I think it will happen eventually. But I'm not too sure when. It is Mason Mount as United, Manchester United, are linked with him with a possible fave in around 50 to 70 million now. As a United fan, do I want Mason Mount at the club? Honestly, no. I just He hasn't been good enough this year. I said he has not been good enough this year. I mean, maybe a year or two ago, I'd take him in a heartbeat. 
but you know, I'm just have just haven't seen enough from him this year. I think he's been really poor for Chelsea this year. Of course, I mean, look at the league table that really tells you it all, doesn't it? But you know, Mason Mount at United. I mean, he may seem to be all right. Maybe I give him a year or two. Maybe give him a chance. Like he could still prove to be a decent player for us. Who knows? But you know, I think there definitely is a lot better players uh, out in the market there. I mean, if you give me the option between McAllister and Mount. I take McAllister all day long, but you know Mason Mount definitely still can prove to be a decent player for United. I do guess you know maybe they give him a chance. I wouldn't be paying more than fifty million though. Fifty million tops. If Chelsea aren't budging and want more than fifty million, forget about it. He's not worth more than fifty million. Fifty million tops. If we can get him for that, I'd be happy enough. I'll, I'll, I'll give him a chance. I'll see how he gets on. But you know, overall, maybe there is better players there in the market. He definitely can prove to be good for us. We just have to wait and see what happens here. I think we're going to sign him eventually over the next few weeks, maybe even the next month or two. I think it's going to happen nonetheless. We'll see how he gets on. He definitely could prove to be a decent player. Then again, he could just completely flop like a few other players in the past. So Mason Mount, to United of the rumour, 50 to 70 million. Not too sure how I feel in it. I might give him a chance, but then again, he could either prove to be an excellent player for United and become one of our vital players over the next few years, or he could prove to be a flop like many have done before. So Mason Mount to United, I may, I may take him, not 50, more than 50 million, but I think he definitely could be a decent squad player. He definitely would be a decent player for us overall. And if Ten Hag sees the potential in him, I'm back on Ten Hag and I'm seeing what goes on then and I'm seeing what role Mount will play for next year. And that will end of this transfer news, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you all for the support of the channel once again. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all once again in KTFG very, very soon.